Previously, we explored the early days of this infamous, sprawling gothic asylum and took you into the decaying first floor of its ward for the criminally and violently insane. Today, we take you deeper into its dark, abandoned halls and explore what was left behind in the last days of this massive institution. On this explore with us today are Thinkmaker, myself, and guest explorers, Free Spirit and Dark Sparkle. We left off last time, heading up the stairs to the second level. As we enter these long hallways, we will be taking you through offices, therapy and medical rooms, patient dorms and cafeterias. This room looks to have been a small medicine storage room or pharmacy, with a dumbwaiter for moving it between the floors. These porches dot the side of the wards, having allowed patients to sit in the sun. Now they are home to strange graffiti visages. This rec room has not only an overturned pool table, but a walker strangely stuck in the ceiling. A major feature of the ward layout are the lengthy corridors that form each section of the double H shape of the building. A view outside shows one of the newest buildings looming in the distance. By the 1950s, there were some 6,000 patients in this sprawling complex of buildings all around us. The Cheney Memorial Building was a 10-story, 960-bed addition built in 1952 that helped the hospital cope with its massive needs for housing and care. It was named after Dr. Cheney, who himself had built the very ward for the violently insane that we explore today. Dr. Hunt was next to step in as superintendent and finally discontinue insulin shock therapy, where patients were injected with large amounts of insulin to induce short daily comas repeated for weeks on end, and also he oversaw the cessation of patient lobotomies by 1957. In 1962, Dr. Snow stepped in as superintendent and created a 67,000 square foot rehabilitation center in 1971, which was the last large development on the site. By 1975, the original old Kirkbride Asylum was mostly empty, 
with newer buildings active around it still. A decade later, by 1984, the hospital population had fallen from 6,000 to just 900. By 1987, the old 1800s Kirkbride began to suffer from floor collapses and the building was boarded up in 1990. By 1994, the campus and its smaller offshoot campus combined and finally in 2000, the Cheney Memorial Building was abandoned as well, leaving the complex empty and open to decay, scrappers, and vandals. This thinner hallway connected one side of the two H-shaped sections to the frontal V-shaped area which housed the cafeteria. A hole smashed in this wall reveals a shaft with a chimney. On the wall, a phrase acknowledging the physically trapped nature of the people who sat in this room every day. A patient tub sits alone on the floor. Um, not really for a little bit.
This dark room acted as a storage for ward supplies. As we head downstairs to a section we could not previously reach, the flight is ringed by a distinctive anti-suicide caging. These rooms seem to have been offices and are covered with extremely out-of-date tech junk. It's hard to imagine someone coming across these in a hundred years, when already these items are almost alien to us. This room is completely full of manuals, hard drives, and disks from the earliest days of personal computer technology. The disc reads 1987. It's unlikely the ward was used much past the 1990s 
when it housed a cooking school for patients. In the far end of this cafeteria-like room are a few chairs still sitting in the sun. Like a small kitchen or something. The sample meal selection seemed very bland. These suggestions to deal with stress appear to be an original staff posting. The dark room is not only cluttered with furniture, but also contains lots of daily records.
Hello. Good. Says danger explosion hazard. Not used in the presence of flammable anesthetic. Oh, it's a E. 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 G. What appears to be an old ECG machine sits on a desk. like a burned out gurney. A burned out gurney. A failed arson has left a scorched wheeled chair. Or, I don't know what it is. The whole area is littered with medical leftovers and suggests an area of treatment rooms. Underfoot are feeding tubes and oxygen tubes forming coiled snake-like piles. In this room, a single chair sits with the oxygen tank holder the patient would have wheeled around with them.
Room upon room of old sagging stained chairs and the remnants of ill patients' everyday lives. The last very intact chamber holds almost perfectly arranged medications and equipment. The destruction and vandalism in this room is just a small symptom of the greater destruction of the hospital grounds. In 2005, the huge campus was sold to developers for just $3 million. In 2007, a fire destroyed the massive south wing of the main Kirkbride building. Just three years later, the floors collapsed. In 2012, the last smaller off-site buildings closed due to a budget deficit with the patients moving to other hospitals. In 2015, developers announced a $200 million plan of development of the site into 750 homes, a retail plaza, and a hotel, and the demolition of 60 or so existing buildings. That same year, in a shocking crime, William McKinney was charged with stabbing to death Jerusha Christie and dumping her body on the hospital grounds. His friend Jerome Harris was also charged with assisting in the cover-up. Finally, in 2018, the campus suffered a further fire that destroyed the main Kirkbride administration building, which had been a focus of historic preservation battles. The fire conveniently cleared the way for development to continue on the rest of the site, which includes the ward we explored today. The site of the old Kirkbride today is heartbreaking for anyone that loves rare historic architecture. A scan of the south male patient wing shows collapses, fire damage, and extreme decay. This 150-year-old building is now a blankly staring shell with ornate arches, peaked roofs, and complex brickwork. The trees in the front have been cleared for planned demolition.
We take the risk and move towards the front, which is a secure area due to the recent arson. In the distance to the left, the Kirkbride administration building's towers loom. Behind us are the tall buildings of the newer campus. The administration building is a truly remarkable structure, even gutted by fire. As we had thought might happen, we're spotted and a policeman drives quickly towards us, ending the exploration today. Hi. It's unlikely that the builders of Thomas Kirkbride's massive undertakings would have imagined that they would, in just 150 years, be bulldozed to put up mundane wooden houses, storefronts, and walking areas. For the patients inside, these gothic, towering, peaked wards, their stories are forgotten and they lie in local unmarked graves by the thousands. The successes and abuses of their doctors and staff seem lost to us. Today, the mentally ill freely wander the streets with few services to treat them, many of them past patients of these very hospitals. As these last great houses of healing and horror slowly fade away, so do the lessons held in their wards. Join us next time as we explore two strange and mysterious miniature abandoned sites. Subscribe and explore with us today.